Hello, I'm Ali from Ali G Art Designs. Thank you for joining my channel today. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. So rather than just a normal canvas, we are going to paint on this. So this is just a cheap Kmart side table and we're going to turn it into a piece of art. So you're going to see it from being painted right through to being resined and what it looks at the end. It is a beautiful piece. I've already done it and it is gorgeous. I absolutely love it. Uh, so stay to the end so you don't miss that process. Um, all right, let's get started. Let's get messy and paint. So I have got the tabletop. Um, don't put the legs on later. Um, as you can see, the preparation I have done is I have uh, put contact at the back to protect the back so I don't want to get all paint all over that I need to keep that clean uh, so I just basically cut out a circle and just stick it all on and then this side I have actually put a coat of resin on so I will be coating the whole table with resin later um, but it is really important that you uh, seal your wood. So this is not like a really good quality piece of wood. It is from Kmart. It is basically just MDF with a bit of a wood veneer on it. Um, but that doesn't matter because it's a canvas and it's going to be covered. Um, so I have just covered that with resin and then given it a sand so that it is uh, able to hold the paint a bit better and that will protect the table from swelling so that it doesn't end up leaking into whatever little gaps there might be um, and cause it to all be wonky. So here we have our blank canvas and we are going to start putting a beautiful painting on top. Uh, all my paints today are global paints um, except for I've got a couple of um, colours that are Pebeo and one Liquitex. But anyway, all that will be in the, descri in the descriptions. Um, oh, let's get started then. So I'm just spinning this up so the video is not too long. Um, and I'll start with my base, which is like a charcoal grey. Um, I make it myself just out of um, obviously global black. Uh, add some uh, white to it. And I also add a bit of Payne's grey just to, uh, you know, give it a, a nicer sort of grey. I am actually covering the sides of this table. Um, just, uh, just thought I'd try this. I don't normally do the sides. I usually try and keep the natural wood looking there, but this table doesn't actually have a nice natural wood. So I thought I'd cover it up and see how we go with that. Um, it's important to give it a nice even layer, um, especially with the, the, the slipperiness of the um, resin underneath. Um, just got to make sure sure that you fully cover it and of course I've just given it a torch there and uh, that to really get rid of any bubbles um, you want to get rid of them otherwise you get little pinholes in your paint so I'm putting my first color on which is just global white My second colour is ultraviolet, again global, um, just following the same line as the white. And the third colour, we've got a cool blue, again just going over that. It's important to sort of have a look at what, what, colors what what their transparency is just so that you don't color over a color with an opaque color um, but these darker colors tend to be quite transparent this one that i'm putting on now is actually again another custom color it is uh, the combination of magenta and metallic black it's actually a really pretty color it creates a beautiful shimmer um, and this color here is a pebio color which is iridescent blue-green. It's also a colour that brings a lot of shimmer to your paint. 
paintings and then this one is iridescent green blue now I may have them around the wrong way uh, but it, they're both on the canvas <laughs> either way they're both there um, and then I've got this uh, rose gold which is also a, a global color I love this color I use it in so many paintings and it always stands out as this beautiful color um, very happy with it and now I'm putting a pearl metallic which is also global uh, this also just gives it a lot of shimmer it gives it a bit of an icy look as well which is really pretty in the end and to top it off with some gold which is Liquitex gold I'm just going to put some more black or should I say charcoal grey around just to help the paint move when I blow it out with the hairdryer. Um, if it's too dry around there it just doesn't move so um, and then you can overdo it where it moves too much so it's just finding that right balance. My um, consistencies in my paints are equal to each other so the base is just as runny as what the top colour is giving it a, another torch uh, just for any bubbles that may have popped up you don't want to be looking at your table and thinking ah what have I done there <laughs> ready for the blow dry I do apologize for the glare I didn't realize how glary it was until later when I watched the video um, but in the end you will see the colors a little bit more clearer bear with this moment I know the blowout is the prettiest time and the most exciting part um, it's just unfortunate that I just had more light than I knew I had all right now it's that point where you look at your your piece and because i love to put the botanical uh petals on it you know just to it really just gives it a lot of distinction um so i'm just blowing out where i haven't quite reached it with the hair dryer um and just also helps me to know where am i forming my petals exactly um and then of course you just got to stand back and look at it and say where does the natural petal sort of look like it needs to be without it becoming messy um, sometimes I don't get that right and sometimes it just works out perfectly um, just giving it a bit more of a blow you just have a lot more control when you blow it with your mouth you get closer to it all right, so now I'm just going to start doing the finger swipes and just looking at where that naturally falls in line. It's a bit of a process. I think I'll just let some music play while you're watching this.
that is so pretty. Oh, I don't know if I need to do anything else to it. Okay, I'm happy with that. I'm not going to do anything more. I'm going to let it dry and then we can give it some resin. Okay, we'll see you when it's dry. Well, this little baby is all dry and it looks absolutely gorgeous. I just love it so much. I am going to put a cover of resin on it. It is so pretty. I'm just trying to get some shit. Okay, so I thought I'd show you the process of what I do for resining. Um, so here is my resin. I've already stirred it up. It's a one-to-one -one part resin. It's got a few bubbles in it, but we can pop them out once I have uh, laid it out. Um, the resin I use is Barnes. Um, this is the resin I use. I have not had any problems with this resin whatsoever. Um, the resin I was using before I switched the, to this gave me all sorts of problems. I thought, what on earth am I doing wrong with my resin? I would have lines, I would have stretch marks, I would have dimples. It was just just horrible to work with. Um, but this one, I couldn't believe it the first time I used it. I thought, oh my goodness, it's just a perfect layer of glass and it was just beautiful. Well, let's hope it, it uh, is true to me once again. Um, so I've mixed it up. I've got obviously a lot more resin than I need. I do have a lot of coasters to cover, so I've made a little bit more um, and we'll see how we go. Resin never gets wasted. Whatever I have left over either goes into jewellery or goes into something else. Um, but definitely I've got heaps of uh, painted coasters that need resin. So here we go. Just pour right in the middle. Already you can just see that glossy effect. Um, and I'm just going to start spreading it out. I'm going to use my hands. I probably should have double gloved, but I've already got resin on these gloves. So I'm just going to... Uh, once these get wrecked, I'll just put them. I've never had one split on me, so <laughs> just spreading it out with my hands. It's a lot easier. I'll move you. Now I do want my resin to go over the side because I need the sides to be covered with resin, which I don't normally do with the tables, but um, thought I'd better start. I know we all need to go up a level every time I paint. I try and learn new things. So, uh, looks like a pretty good covering. Just going to put a little bit more around the edges so I can start pushing it over the edge. I don't want too much over the edge because it just drips off. You know you've got a self leveling product that you're trying to get to stay upright. It's a bit tricky. So I've got a good amount on there. It, nothing seems to be saying it's shallow. It's uh, just enough I think. really fun to feel in your hands just gotta make sure the sides are really covered and get them as flat as possible because otherwise you get little wonky drops and things like that Pretty even for on all my items. Just gonna pop all the bubbles and that'll help me see what else is going on. Just 
see the pop, I don't know if you can see it, but I can see the bubbles popping as I go and sometimes just give it a rest for a little while and then I do it some more. Um, I do see something I'm not sure should be there. Just a hair. I'm going to pour a little bit more because it's a little bit thin in certain parts. Um, so I'm trying to catch the light so I can see what needs to be fixed. If there's any hair in it, so excuse my head, um, but it, I've really got to get in there to have a look. Uh, I don't know what that is. Oh yeah, that's a big hair. Um, just gonna run my fingers down the bottom and just get any drips that are coming off. You could use an ice cream stick if you want. But my hands are really dirty. Well, the gloves are anyway. Because if you don't pull, take off the drips, it'll pull your resin down. And then you end up having it pull away from the size on the top and it doesn't look good. You have to do it again, basically, if that happens. Okay, what's this that I see? I'm just going to do another torch. I just see one more little hair there. Alrighty. I think it's good. Now, of course, every movement around stirs up dust and just causes more things to fall um, so I've got these little uh, stands on the side because I don't have a container big enough to go over the whole thing so I'm just using a really old painting and turning it upside down to cover it so here's the back of an old painting covering it like that and then because I get a bit of traffic in this place I am going to just also cover it with plastic like that and hopefully that'll stop dust from coming in I'll come and check it again I'll probably wait for half an hour or so and come and check it and if there's anything else that's fallen in there I just start the process again I do also need to wipe whatever new drips have come in, has dropped down because we need to get rid of them. It's really difficult to get rid of dry drips on the bottom, even though I've got the contact there. Um, it's really difficult to get rid of it and you don't want to be sanding to try and get rid of it. It's a lot of work. Anyway, um, I'll see you, uh, I'll show you the end results. Okay. Just thought I would video it from another angle without the ring light taking complete control. Um, so you just can see, obviously, the other lights. It's very pretty. Very pretty indeed. I'm very happy. Cute little table.